tropical rainforests are home to some of the most unique flora and fauna of the world. Malaysia is home to 21 tropical rainforest national parks that cover three quarters of the country's area. In the north of Sarawak stands a national park that transcends others of its kind. The park attracts not only tourists, but also scientists and researchers. The Gunung Mulu National Park, the gem of East Malaysia. Streams of Clear River weaves through the 50,000 hectares of the largest national park in Malaysia. The Gunung Mulu National Park stands at between 50 to 2,000 meters above sea level and experiences the monsoon season from December to March. On the 3rd of October 1974, the Gunung Mulu National Park was recognized as a national park and received recognition by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site. Taman Negara Mulu bukan sahaja terkenal di Sarawak, di Malaysia atau di antara Asia Tenggara, tetapi juga terkenal di seluruh dunia. Ia adalah salah satu dari salah sebuah daripada World Natural Heritage Sites yang diiktiraf oleh IUCN dan UNESCO dari segi kehebatan nilai estetik, landscape geologi, pinnacle, gua, jurang dan sebagainya dan uh, fungsi dalam menampung kekayaan kepelbagaian biologi yang ada di sekitarnya. The Gunung Mulu National Park is located on the island of Borneo, a 30-minute flight away from Miri. The National Park is also home to the Aborigines from the Berawan and the Penang tribes for centuries. The park opened its doors to the public in 1985. Today, visitors can experience the magnificence of the park and the hospitality of the Berawan and Penang tribes. With souvenirs to take home, the Gunung Mulu National Park experience is one to be remembered. The river plays a significant role of providing food and communication for the inhabitants of the park. The Tutul and Malinau rivers 
on the main rivers here. The Malinao River makes it possible for visitors to venture into the heart of this wonder of nature. The Gunungulu National Park is also home to the largest limestone cave in the world. The marriage of the formations forms breathtaking structures of stalactites and stalagmites. The limestone caves here are approximately three to five million years old. Beauty takes time. So did this natural marvel. Secara teorinya, kalau air yang terlalu banyak turun memasuki rekahan tadi, dia akan terus mengat turun dan mengalir terus jadi air sungai di bawah tanah. Tetapi apabila airnya tidak begitu banyak, dan air ni akan perlahan-lahan dia akan mengalir di bumbung gua dan dia akan mengenapkan anapan kapur tadi di bumbung gua. Satu-satu bumbung gua yang kita kenali selalunya adalah stalaktit. Uh, di samping itu, sebahagian daripada air tadi akan mengalir terus ke bawah dan kadang-kadang dia akan membentuk anapan di bawah pula. Pembentukan apa yang kita kenali sebagai stalagmit. The caves in Mulu are made individual by signature attraction. The sticky insect web, for example, is unique to the lung cave. The deer cave is the largest cave in the world and is the longest in the Gunung Mulu National Park. It is the home to the crooked lip bat known as Carapon plicata. These bat leaves trails of its droppings called guano that can be found all over the floors of the cave. Millions of tourists pay a visit to the deer cave to catch a glimpse of the shape of Abraham Lincoln's face on the wall of this cave. Gua-gua yang terbentuk ada yang besar, ada yang kecil, ada yang lebar, ada yang tinggi, ada yang bertingkat-tingkat. Ini semua adalah dipengaruhi oleh gerakan ataupun perkembangan aras air bawah tanah. Di mana air aras bawah tanah itu berada dan berapa lama dia berada. Kalau Sebagai contohnya, aras air bawah tanah kekal lama pada satu aras umpamanya, dia akan lebih cenderung untuk menghasilkan gua yang lebar tapi tidak begitu tinggi. Seringkali air bawah tanah ni dia bertahan pada satu aras, kemudian dia turun mendadak, dia bertahan pada aras yang lebih rendah, satu ketika dia turun lagi uh, pada aras yang lebih rendah lagi. Ini akan menghasilkan gua-gua yang bertingkat-tingkat. Tentang gua-gua yang berkelok-kelok, itu sebenarnya dipengaruhi oleh laluan air bawah tanah. Air bawah tanah ini lalu juga mengikut retakan-retakan tadi. Jadi sistem retakan. Kalau kita boleh lihat sistem retakan di permukaan, aliran sungai di bawah uh, gua itu juga mengikut sistem-sistem yang tertentu. This is the wind cave, aptly named by the wind that can be felt blowing through the opening of the cave.
These milk froth-like formation that can be seen on the walls of the cave is known as the moon milk structure and is the cave's signature. Clearwater Cave, named after the stream of clear water that's ever flowing in the cave, gives a tranquil atmosphere to its visitors. The stream of water will finally merge with the Milanau River. The one leaf plant from the Monophila species found at the entrance is unique to the Clearwater Cave. But what goes on on the surface is a different story altogether. From a distance, sharp peaks or pinnacles of Mount Api and Mount Panarat can be seen. Behind these amazing formations lies a history. The pinnacles date back to millions of years. Proses pelarutan batu kapur berlaku bukan sahaja di permukaan tetapi turut berlaku di dalam jasad batu kapur tersebut. Proses ini banyak dipengaruhi oleh kehadiran sata-sata lapisan ataupun sata-sata retakan oleh kerana sifat batuannya yang yang tegar menyebabkan dia retak. Air yang berasid tadi sudah mula masuk meresap ke dalam ke kawasan batu kapur. So asid-asid ini akan penetrate terhadap akan masuk ke dalam rekahan-rekahan yang ada pada permukaan batu kapur. Hakisan akan terus berlaku terhadap rekahan-rekahan tadi so, akibatnya akan terbentuk lurah-lurah yang dalam kemudian bila lurah-lurah ini bergabung dengan lurah-lurah lain akhirnya uh, batu kapur-batu kapur tadi terputus dan terbentuk rabung-rabung yang tajam yang kita kenali sebagai pinnacle Venturing by foot into the depths of Mulu can be quite a challenge, especially to those who are not used to extreme outdoor activities. The rest stops or camps allow visitors a break from the journey. Here is Camp 5, located at the Melinau River. Here, visitors will be able to catch a glimpse of the awe-inspiring forest with a foreground of Mount Panarat and the entrance to the Tiger Cave. Sunset in the National Park is the time when nocturnal creatures begin their day. At one look, this appears as a dry leaf. This is the horned frog of Borneo, or Megophus nasuta. The large surface area of the Gunungmulu National Park enables it to be home to a variety of frogs and toads.
It's a new day. The climb to the high grounds of Mulu is a challenge. The terrains are extremely steep. Climbers are advised to take extra precaution climbing here. Paku River, a stream that leads up to the Milanao River, is a magnificent sight. The clear waters of the unblemished rivers gives a clear view of its inhabitants. Bonyo ironwood is among the largest species of trees found here in the River Rhine area of the National Park. The plants that belong to the River Rhine species grows wild in places that are always flooded, especially during the wet season and along streams. The ample variety of flowers here makes it the ideal place for insects to procreate. This is especially so for the branch insect, grasshoppers, cockroaches and lantern bugs. The Gunungbulu National Park is also home to heath forests. Trees and plants found in the area are much smaller in size. The pitcher tree, for example, calls this forest home. The fertile lands of this Borneo island enables all sorts of plants, trees and flowers to inhabit and grow in its lush landscape. This is the home to the highest number of dipterocarp trees in the world. Shoria tree or the Maranti tree for example is able to grow up to 50 meters in height. The wind seeds of this magnificent tree can be seen strewn all over the grounds due to the height of the tree. The dipterocarp trees are also home to all kinds of critters such as the caterpillars, millipedes, spiders, mollusks and insects. The trees and plants that grow in this montane forest area can be divided into two categories, low-lying plants and trees that can be seen growing at the foot of the mountains and ones that grow in the highlands. Trees that inhabit the foot of the mountains are large in circumference and tall. This forest is the habitat for the hornbills, synonymous with Sarawak. Trees that grow in the highlands are not as tall as the ones at the foot of the mountains. The humid weather in the highlands makes it the perfect place for all sorts of epiphytes and other plants that thrive in the humidity, such as mushrooms and fungus. At the height of more than 1,200 meters above ground, all sorts of moss grow fertile on tree trunks, especially after the wet season.
Borneo Island is the place where hundreds of species of butterflies call home. The Raja Brook species known the world over also inhabits this tropical rainforest. Depending on the weather, Mulu promises its visitors a jaw-dropping sighting known as the Bat Exodus. Almost every day at the same time, three million bats can be seen taking flight from their homes in the evening in search for provisions. These bats can be seen leaving their caves at around 4.30 to 6.30 in the evening. This phenomenon is one of the main attractions of Mulu. Gunung Mulu National Park holds many of the creator's hidden treasures. For the people who call it home, the peace and tranquility here is beyond comparison. It is a must-visit destination for all nature lovers.